Welcome back. In this video on uh, data visualization, I want to dive into uh, how we use color effectively within visualizations. So one of the challenges with color is that it can be very easy to apply it uh, across lots of different data to encode information. And, uh, but at some point, and that point is usually fairly low, uh, our ability to distinguish colors tends to saturate. So here, you know, you can see an example of uh, where every single state in, in the country is given a different color, and you can see that it would be very hard to pick out, you know, where any particular state actually falls in this visual uh, because the colors are too similar. So if I'm looking for North Dakota, it's going to look similar to Texas and Missouri and, you know, other points and, and uh, you know, our, our ability to visually distinguish colors saturates. So uh, a much more effective way of using color is to, you know, try to, to limit the number of categories actually being visualized. So here's that same information, but instead of visualizing every state with a unique color, we've broken, we've used color to represent regions. Uh, so now there's only four different distinct colors on the figure, and it's much easier actually to tell those four colors apart. Now, when you've done this, you've lost the ability to tell individual states apart, uh, and you need to instead rely on direct labeling when you need to distinguish individual data points. Uh, that said, in, in a lot of cases, because remember, what you're trying to do is to, to have already thought about the message you're trying to convey uh, and, and the, the key points you want to make, uh, you don't need you don't necessarily need to label every point in a visualization, but to more focus the labels on the points that need to be discussed. So in this case, I might be labeling the points that I tend to discuss more in a further analysis or in the text that accompanies this figure, that the things I want to be able to call out. And the exact identity of other states might not be important to what we're trying to convey. Uh, Here's another example of kind of the excessive use of, of color where you know, here color is not really conveying uh, additional information. You know, it's just kind of a gradient across uh, what is already an apparent gradient in, in, uh, in population growth rate. Um, so that's one, one problem with this figure. Again, you, you can't really distinguish things next to each other. And, and I would argue that it's not adding information. We're not using color to effectively. Uh, so similarly, if we uh, use the same color screen we saw earlier and you know, are, are sort of reducing the color to just dis describing geographic regions, uh, now we're actually adding a, a new, what is really a new bit of information to this figure, you know, being able to visualize uh, regional differences. And once we visualize those regional differences, uh, things pop out much more. You can see patterns clearly. You know, the West jumps to the top, the Northeast jumps to the bottom, uh, the South is spread out quite a bit. And so we're using color more effectively uh, to distinguish things. And actually, that, that leads me to kind of the next set of points I want to make, which is to be thoughtful about uh, when choosing a color palette, what you're intending to use the color for. So for example, are you using color to distinguish among groups, or are you trying to use uh, color to uh, represent the scale of some underlying continuous variable. So when we use colors to distinguish things, we want to choose strongly contrasting data, and that's usually used what are called qualitative color scales. And I'd actually uh, recommend folks check out this website, Color Brewer, which is a, a, a useful resource. It's not the only, there's other similar sites out there, uh, but the, there are websites out there that help you choose color palettes uh, depending on you know, kind of the goal of the, the, um, the visualization. So you know, if you go to color palette, you can specifically check that you want qualitative color scales that give you nice strongly contrasting groups uh, versus color gradients that might be useful to represent data. So these were, this would be an example of, of colors uh, used to represent Continuous data, and these are usually referred to as sequential scales because the colors represent some change or some gradient. Um, the top one represents uh, a monochromatic uh, scale where we have a single 
hue that we're, we're working with. So it's, you know, gradient of blue from very dark to very light. It can be very, I find that, that um, those sorts of uh, single color schemes are, are often very easy to understand and easy to represent. Um, and here are some, there, that said, there are other scales that can be done. So the, these other two scales do represent uh, gradients that are not monochromatic, but actually you change from one color to the other, but still have this nice feature of kind of uh, still implying intensity. You know, you're still catching that, you know, the, the left side of uh, this gradient is, is representing a much stronger value of something uh, than the right side. Uh, that said, there's a lot of scales that are out there uh, that don't really do this effectively. So one of the, the, the worst offenders that is used frequently is, are things like rainbow scales um, that, don't, that are not really effective at indicating uh, which data are larger and which are smaller. Um, so you want color scales where that is true. It's clear where, what means big, what means small, and uh, where the differences in color give you some indication of the differences in the underlying data values. So, you know, if I look at rainbow, I don't really have an intuitive way of knowing how much, you know, blue is different from red. Uh, as, as much as I did as if I had a, just a gradient of blue. The other thing we'll note is if, you know, I think it jumps out is if you convert the rainbow scale into gray scale, you see that it's not, it's, it's, it's uh, the, the underlying intensity is going up and down and up and down, which is part, one of the things that makes great uh, rainbow particularly uh, confusing scale. Um, so in the next few figures, I want to kind of show uh, some, some examples of the use of kind of uh, sequential scales uh, that can be optimized uh, to convey information uh, much more crisply. So you know, here, these are uh, visualizations uh, you know, of, of uh, these are eddies, and um, we see in the kind of classic rainbow on the far left that we're kind of saturating and losing information, uh, and then we move to kind of this blue to red gradient. Uh, we get, you know, uh, we can kind of see the eddies more clearly, things that were previously kind of washed out in shades of, uh, you know, green in the middle become more distinct. Uh, we can see more detail. And then this last color uh, map on the right, which is not monochromatic, it is actually going, uh, you know, from, from kind of a, a brown to a green to a blue, actually is, is actually giving us very strong set of uh, contrast and actually kind of makes some of the features of, of the data pop out even more clearly. Um, here's another example of a, a visualization as, as well as a link to the underlying article uh, that has this visualization and the one before it, which was uh, in EOS, um, kind of showing, again, the classic rainbow, which has uh, this kind of, uh, is, is maybe it's using colors that are, are too intense uh, and kind of saturating our visual systems. The, the middle one is a, a kind of a desaturated version of the rainbow, so we, we've uh, damped uh, the intensity of, of that rainbow gradient. Just doing that actually helps us uh, pick up more detail. Uh, and then, you know, uh, a newer palette on the far right, again, designed to allow greater, you know, allow, allow greater detail to emerge from these uh, color gradients. Uh, another thing that we can usefully do in color is, is to have, we, we talked about uh, qualitative scales to, to provide contrast and uh, kind of sequential scales to uh, provide uh, gradients. The other thing we can have is, is divergent scales, which are, are like sequentials, but they can go in two different directions. And frequently we're using these to try to visualize, for example, a positive or negative data where there's some, where the, the center, the scale is centered on zero. So the middle values of the lowest intensity are, are usually set to you know, a light color in the middle. And then we, we move in say a positive and negative direction away from that where you know, these are useful when you need to kind of have that strong contrast between those two extremes. Um, it's also important when you use these sort of divergent scales to make sure 
uh, that they are balanced so that ma magnitude is perceived correctly. So, you know, if I had an example where, you know, positive values went up to plus five and negative values went down to minus 15, I wouldn't want, you know, the most intense value in one direction to be five and the most intense in the other direction to be 15 because that would, you know, kind of distort uh, the relationship between color intensity and, and magnitude. So, you'd, you know, the scale in one direction might be uh, shorter to d indicate that the departures in that direction are, are lower in intensity. Uh, the other thing that can be done effectively with color is using it to highlight pieces of information that we really want uh, the viewer to focus on. So here is a, a different version of the, the previous population growth rate figure that we looked at, where again, we were using uh, color to indicate region, but we've now damped that color uh, um, for most of the diagram to a lower intensity, lower saturation, uh, but then brought up the intensity on two specific groups, uh, Texas and Louisiana, that we want to visually pop for the reader so they can focus on those two groups. And, and presumably the text going with this is going to focus on uh, those specific groups. Uh, the final thing I wanted to talk about in, with regard to colors is to, to try to choose palettes that are uh, sensitive to uh, color blind or other color deficiencies in your viewer. Uh, these you know, some, some form of color vision deficit can be remarkably common in the population. It's something about 10% of the male population in particular uh, have some, uh, red, blue, uh, red, green color blindness. And so scales like uh, you know, a, a red to green gradient scale uh, you know, becomes you know, almost indistinguishable uh, for, for much of the population. Um, and that there are, it would encourage you to uh, use palettes kind of that are designed to be sensitive to, to those with color vision deficits. And then also there are, there are websites and tools out there you can, that you can drop figures into to see how they, uh, to kind of, that kind of simulate how someone with a, a color de vision deficit might see that. So it can be helpful to you know, just double check that important features of this particular visualization aren't being lost uh, in that way. Uh, and the, uh, the, the final, the bottom panel here shows a, a particular color panel palette that has been proposed to be sensitive to useful to all three major forms of color vision deficit. Uh, that shows up, it, this shows up in the, in the reading. Uh, the numbers on these colors are their hex codes that you can use directly with an R. Uh, and then th there's a table in the reading that also shows uh, the RGB and other encodings uh, for the, that particular uh, color scheme.